All right, having my first bar me after Tara's bite, but I'm the bar me master, so I'll let you know. That's good. We that we been good. Holy crap! Hey, what's up, guys? Tip and Tara here from Fit to Travel, and welcome to another installment of us just sitting here and chatting with you guys. Um, we are talking again about Vietnam, and today we're going to be talking about Hoi An, which was one of our favorite places we've visited. So Tara will tell you more about why that is. Yeah. So uh, going to Laos, we were going to Laos to visit Tip's family, um, and there's not that many flight options to Laos, so we decided to tack on a few more days in a nearby country. When we went to Laos previously, we spent some time in Thailand. Um, so this time we wanted to do something different. So we decided on Vietnam. And um, we had never been to Vietnam, so we didn't really know exactly where to go because we were only gonna do um, like less than a week. And so we weren't gonna be like traveling around a lot or anything. So we just stumbled on flying in and out of Da Nang, which um, is pretty close to Hoi An. So it's, you know, 20 to 30 minutes from, Hoi An is 20 to 30 minutes from Da Nang International Airport. And so what we did is we just decided to stay all of those nights in Hoi An. Um, we stayed at the Riverside Villa and Apartments, which was a great little place, um, kind of on the outskirts of town, but it was very, it's very easy and very cheap to get into town. Um, you can rent bikes there, they have a pool, they have like a restaurant, so... Thank you. Right here. Thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, so good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> How about your smoothie? Delicious. <laughs> Not glum. Uh, the pool was nice. It was, I think, a very like great location for us because we could go into town when we wanted to, but it wasn't like the hustle and bustle of some of those places that are more in the middle of of Hoi An. So yeah, it's a great location because um, it was actually only a few blocks away from one of my really good buddies. Dad owns a um, a little villa B and B there, and it was only a few blocks away from there because it's uh, even though it's on the outskirts of town, I thought it was an amazing location, yeah. like Tara said, because it was just there was a lot to do just in that area, and um, and it wasn't too far from town. Yeah, it's easy to get around. Um, you know, you can use their rideshare service, which is called Grab, um, but it's. You know, you can ride a bike in there too, you know, rent a bike. So um, we loved Riverside. They were great. They did, they took really good care of us. Everyone there was they so loved friendly. They loved Tara. <laughs> so friendly. Um, YouTube. Yay! Yeah. 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 Oh, that's one of my friends right there. Her name's Vietnamese. Today we're going to talk about things to do in Hoi An. So here we go. All right, the Hoi An Central Market, which is basically is downtown. That's where a lot of people might look to stay, which, like we said, I think we were only a, maybe a five-minute grab ride from there. Um, and it's, you know, that's where everything's popping, everything's happening. It's just right in the center of town. So, like, it's if you do stay there, it's, uh, you know, you don't need to have a car or anything along those lines. You can walk everywhere you go and there's there's just a lot happening down there there's a lot of vendors are selling whatever you can think of like if you're looking for a night market like they have a great night market there if you're looking for a day market they got a good day market there's a lot of good stuff to do and there's a lot of bars a lot of restaurants um and then just one thing that you want to make sure like when you're in any southeast asia country is to make sure that you barter with people because that's kind of part of the game they will set it up a little bit higher and then you know you will find the right price so but just make sure that you are you know just 
you're there and you're enjoying the time and then you're not trying to take advantage of them but also just realize that if they say something's worth a hundred thousand they probably will take 70 to 80 thousand for it yeah at the central market we got i got like a lantern um there for like five dollars and um you got a couple of tanks and yeah it's got a few things there um but they had to have the, like literally a little bit of everything um mm-hmm. souvenirs um, tailors yeah, yeah whatever yeah. so um it can be a little overwhelming this was like our first thing that we did when we we got to Hoyan. that was like our number one thing and it was mm-hmm. it was you know t- takes you back a little bit but once you kind of get your composure and you just kind of get in the flow of saying no or you know because mm-hmm. they're there to sell you things you know yeah they're trying to make a living so that's just how it is and you just have to kind of tell them no that's not what i want or this is what i want you know what's up we're sitting here in a coffee shop just sweating our but, stuff off, but off. <laughs> uh, we went to old town got dropped off in a grab which is their version of uber and uh, it's very intense from the beginning especially when you're hot discombobulated we got pulled in off the street right away mm-hmm. by a lady that took us to her stall and her stall. wanted us to get tailored clothes. <laughs> Too hot for that right now. I but, gotta go to the shop for that yeah. <laughs> or something. Um, we bought some little stuff, tank and a lantern. Um, everything's really cheap and obviously you want to barter with them reasonably um, and just kind of don't be afraid to say no. Yes. Um, they will be up. They'll be very uh, intense to get you to buy something, and if you don't want it, just just say no or walk away. Yeah, that's just kind of part of the their culture. They hustle, and uh, so I respect the hustle. You just gotta don't feel uh, like Tara said, feel offended if you say no or just kind of walk away or ignore them. It's just it's just what they do. Yeah. Sales tactics. So, yep. but you know, I got a tank for like three dollars and fifty cents, which. You know, that's why I didn't pack too many tanks here, so. He loves his tanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll probably go back in and see what else we can find. Tara's gonna go back in. Whoa. All right, well, yeah. We didn't even scratch this. the surface in there. Yeah, enjoy this adventure. I don't know how much longer I can handle this before we go back to the pool. The next thing is Bana Hills. Bana Hills is a little bit outside of Hoi An and Da Nang. It's like 90 minutes from Um, It's going to be more in the mountains, Um, so it's going to have a resort up there, but what they're known for is the bridge that has the two hands holding the bridge up. Um, So that's... All right, so we are here on the Golden Bridge, which are infamous for these hands holding the bridge up. Um, We are towards the end of the bridge, and first thing when you get on the bridge, there's going to be a lot of people taking pictures selfie sticks, all of that. So if you can kind of make your way towards the end, it's gonna be a little bit more open. Um, it's, you have to go that way anyways. So um, just allows you a little bit more photo opportunities, um, but it's 9.35 on a Sunday and uh, it's really busy. So just know that first thing in the morning is gonna be the best, um, but there's still plenty of opportunities to get a shot. Um, you just have to kind of be patient and dodge all of the selfie sticks and tripods, but it's worth it to come up here. Yeah. That's like the thing to see. <laughs> um, you'll take cable car up there and you just pay admission for everything. So it's kind of like um, Disneyland, I would say. Um, but a lot cheaper. <laughs> yeah. So we not paid, as many rides. Yeah, and not <laughs> as many rides. Um, tickets cost nine hundred thousand dong, which is about thirty six U.S. dollars, and that includes everything to get up. So the round trip cable car, entrance fees. There might be a few little things in there um, that would be an add on, but once you're in there, they have like a French village, an outdoor alpine coaster. They have some Buddhist. Buddhist pagodas, um, like gardens, so you can just kind of walk around, you can eat, grab coffee, all that stuff, but it's a very cool, um, has a really great view overlooking Da Nang, mm. and I'm pretty sure Hoi An, um, and you can see the water, so it's definitely like a, a worth it thing to do, even though it's a little bit further outside of the city. Alright, so the next thing 
to do here is this is for men and women, but um, tailored clothes. So that's one really popular thing that happens down there when we were in the central market. Like they were, you know, somebody tried to grab us to do a tailored fitting. That's a very, very popular thing. Um, but yeah, tailored suits is a, a very, very popular thing that you can get for very, very cheap. And I experienced this. I was, uh, we were just walking down in the central market and then Tara's in some shop and I was just standing there and the, this guy, Eric, who Eric is a G, we're gonna um, shout him out right here. But he came up to me, he was riding a bike. He was just, and then he came up to me and just started talking. I'm sure it was just, you know, he wanted to, to get my business, but he came up to me and he was a really, really genuine guy. We just started talking and then Tara came out like a few minutes later and then she's like, who are you talking to? And it, he was just a really good guy, but he told me about his uh, his uh, his business, which was a tailored shop. And then um, he didn't press me or anything, but he gave me his card and he said, come by. And I told him I would come by. So like two days later, we, came, we went by and uh, the experience was just amazing. Um, he just really cares about what he does. And I'm sure a lot of people do there too, but it was a really genuine interaction. Um, it is uh, Twi Tien Taylor's. Twin TNT T is like the way that you would say it. Okay, well, yeah. We'll add his info down below, his the name of it and where to find it, and also his WhatsApp <laughs> number if you're interested. Um, yeah. He took really good care of us though. So um, we want to make sure that we you yeah. know, shout it him was, out. It was a great experience. I mean, you show up and then you kind of tell them what you're looking for and then they will they will tailor it to you. No pun intended. But they, I got two three-piece suits with a, uh, a black button-down shirt and, um, and then some linen shirts. Um, and like all of this probably would have been a couple grand back here in the States, but... I paid, and Tara got a dress too, um, and we paid just around $500 US for it, which honestly, it should have been probably about $2,500, $3,000 if we would have got from the States. So the stuff is very, very high quality. They do it right away, and then it took them less than 24 hours to make it the exact way that I want, and the suit fits perfectly. It's the first time I've ever had a suit fit me this well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It was really fast, too. Mm -hmm. Like, we went in, we got measured, we went back later that day yeah. to, like, double check, and then we went back the next day to, like, do the final fitting. And so mm -hmm. it was, you know, it's super quick. They do an amazing job. Yeah. Um, they obviously want you to be happy, um, but it was definitely an experience. Like, I've never gotten tailored outfit before. Yeah, and um, the dress fits you well. I didn't know what to get, so that was my number one tip is have something in mind that you want to get. <laughs> Yeah. Made because I didn't know and I just kind of scrambled. Yeah. Um, but it was awesome. It was a cool experience. And especially mm -hmm. when you're in Vietnam, that's like one of the things to do in Vietnam, but especially in Hoi An is to do get some tailored yeah. clothes. Yeah. The tailored clothes is, is something that I've heard about from people, but like until, it's, until you actually do it and experience it, it is, it's worth its weight in gold, especially like the amount of clothes that I got from it. Yeah. Water them perfectly. Okay, man. Awesome. Very good. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Hey, we are. I'm the Eric Taylor designer. Eric the Taylor. Uh, any the client you need to get some suit, uh, we would like to invite you come to visiting me, and I will make comment for you. What style suit you? What style not suit you? Okay. And the contact with me by WhatsApp at the number from the Tara. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. We did this in one day. Yeah. One day. Thank you. Okay. Twenty-four <laughs> hours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not Yeah, that's good. That looks. Yeah. Oh wow. But this one, you only wash my hand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wash my hand. <laughs> wow. Very nice. We're gonna wear this in. Uh, we'll wear this in Laos. The next thing is um, doing a taking a ride in the basket boat in the coconut forest. So you're literally sitting in a big basket boat. So a big round boat. Um, and there's a little 
tiny little um, <laughs> Vietnamese lady that is... Sometimes they're guys, but yeah. Most of them are ladies. Yeah. And she was probably like 90 pounds. She was teeny. Um, rowing you down the river. And so um, you go, you're gone for like an hour total, but like they take you down the coconut forest, um, see all the bamboo and all of the like greenery. And then in the middle of it, like, you know, when the river kind of opens up, they do like a little bit of a fun... Fun atmosphere where like they do, hey, sexy <laughs> they do like music and like dancing on the boat. So they do like where they spin the boat. So they're trying to like you knock know, you off. Yeah, I mean they're really not, but like because of how it's built, like you can like basically get the boat on its side. Um, we'll just show you in the, the video <laughs> that we have um, rather than explain it. Um, and then they take pictures of you along there. So you know it's a fun thing to do um it's pretty relaxing it can get very hot because you're just sitting it out is. there um it's very hot like when you're going through the forest, the channels yeah. to get to like yeah. the main stuff because there's just no airflow. these mangroves i guess mm-hmm. you would call it and there's no airflow but when you get out there it's it gets a little bit cooler but yeah. it was i mean that was one of the you get very sticky and hot. yeah they give you umbrellas if it's raining or for the sun so that's nice um but it's pretty low key. We spent like ten dollars a person or something. Like it was mm-hmm. pretty pretty reasonable. Yeah. Um, and it's just Wor- something different. Yeah, worth its weight in gold. I think. Like you, you have to try. It's a cool. It's a cool. Um, it's a cool experience that you know you might see a lot of people do when they go to Vietnam. But like until you experience it yourself, it's pretty pretty cool. And then Tip got to row the boat also. Bro, yeah. And I suck at rowing boats, <laughs> but you know, I'm gonna work on it. Yeah. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Just hanging out. Let's go. All right, so the next thing is the night market with the lantern and boats. So this was a really, really cool thing that we did. Um, and then we got set up by our boy Kong to do this. He actually set us up with one of his friends who does a tour. And it was me and Tara and my parents. And yet it was actually, you know, we docked from basically close to his restaurant, which was close to where we stayed. And then we, we were on a little river cruise going underneath the bridge and going to the night market. Um that was something I would really highly highly suggest like to a little river cruise lantern thing on the yeah. river. Because we were staying outside of like the downtown area, that's why we took it from where we were. And so it was like instead of going, you know, taking a grab to downtown and then getting on the boat there, we just did the whole thing all as one. So we spent a little bit more on like the actual river cruise part but um you know it was probably like a 30 minute boat ride mm-hmm. it wasn't long at all but it was really cool um you know, nice breeze yeah and we weren't doing anything he was doing every, all the work and then yeah. they you know part of it is like they give you little lanterns that are lit with a candle and you make a wish and you let the lantern go in the water um so you'll see that a lot in town at night um part of the night market like right down there in like the downtown area. That's something that they want you to do is they want you to get on the boat. And I don't think you go for very long. I think it's more like a 10 minute thing, but you go out there to let those lanterns go. So you make a wish, you know, and that's you putting that into the universe. Um, So because we were a little bit further away, we kind of just combined those all to like get into the night market with the lantern, but doing the lantern um release on the boat is really cool that was probably like my favorite part of play on it was just you know very di- i like all the lanterns but uh, <laughs> just very different with my lantern tattoo <laughs> show them i can see you right there. see it from here <laughs> <laughs> that works <laughs> i'll show you a picture um but the boat itself is only like if you're in town doing the night market like getting on the boat and doing the lantern release is only like five to ten US dollars depending on how much. Yeah, it was it was so worth like being on the boat at that time, how hot it was, like that was it was really cool and the city lit up, like being on there is yeah. really cool. Lanterns are like a really 
popular thing, obviously in Vietnam and especially like Hoi An, that's like the city of lanterns. So driving into or like riding in on the boat to that downtown area with everything all lit up um, and all the colorful lanterns is a really cool, cool view. Yep. So the next thing is, um, hopefully you do it a little bit better than I did, but is to get a tattoo, especially at 1984 Studios. Um, they are the best, and we're shouting them out. They don't promote, they aren't sponsoring this or anything, but I always, uh, well, not always, but I wanted to get a tattoo. I like to always try to get tattoos when we travel, but timing never really works because we usually go to places where I want to get in the water, blah 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 but basically this all happened within 24 hours i wanted to get a tattoo before we left and i reached out to this place um they're in hoi an in da nang but i reached out to them and um this was as we were traveling back from laos and we basically had this crazy thing that went down and then we landed in uh da nang and then it was like nine o'clock at night and then we went all the way down to Hawaii Ann, and it was like 11 o'clock and then we met with uh, some of the people that were working there and then we basically worked everything out and then we didn't get back to our hotel in Da Nang until like 2 a.m. and I had to wake up at 5 and come all the way back down at 6 30 to make sure that I got this tat right here make sure that I got the tat and got in time before we went on a journey back home but 1984 studios they helped us out a, a bunch and then they made sure to get everything done but like they got good tattoo spots out there but 1984 is something i really recommend they're super cool people and then they they got me in within 24 hours which they're so they're so talented i'm surprised that they got it done for that and then it was really really cheap in my eyes for what what they did because this was under three hundred dollars us for me so yeah they just did really good work um all the way around you know mm -hmm. from i think the moment you did all that but like the moment you started talking to them and like got you in quickly got us both in quickly um i mean we didn't have a lot of time so they they were really accommodating with that but like yeah. they did really good work um they speak friendly, english super friendly so, yeah. you know they've checked in with us since then to like make sure that it's all healing really well and stuff so mm -hmm. um just all the way around like a very really good experience experience and obviously mm -hmm. you know you want to be careful when you're getting a tattoo in another country just for cleanliness cleanliness <laughs> and all that but um we were very impressed with 1984 tattoo yep. mm -hmm. shout out <laughs> Um, and the last thing to do is get a massage and obviously you can get a massage anywhere but the massages in vietnam are one very inexpensive but also very good um so i got a massage and i spent like ten dollars for an hour massage which is insane and not only that they you know again petite little vietnamese lady like <laughs> climbing on the table to like work on my back and you know like she's putting her whole body weight into me to like make it a good massage she was amazing um, I highly recommend like doing that when you're over there. Any of the Southeast Asia countries, I think, you know, massage is a good idea because it's, it's just like, I just think they're so much better. And, massage. -y. Yeah. And you know, you're, you're paying like a 10th of the price that you would pay here. Um, so definitely something to do, especially if you've traveled for a long time, it's a good way to relax after your long travel. And Tara said the thing last was last, but this is the last thing. Um, this is where to eat. Where to eat. We're going to talk about this. We saved it for last because we know you guys tune in for that because we love to talk about food. <laughs> <laughs> but the food in Vietnam was absolutely amazing. I had friends tell me about how good the food there was, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay. And, you know, I was excited. I'm a big pho connoisseur. And I'll be honest with you, the pho there wasn't amazing. But the other food was really, really good. And especially where we're at in Hoi An, white rose dumplings is kind of their famous thing that they do down there. So what's it called? Do you know in uh, what they call it in Vietnamese? No. Anyways, there's a word for it. But uh, they're really famous for it down there. Um, and then also one thing that I love, I'm 
I think I'm a big critic of this is the bun mi sandwiches and oh my god did I have some really good bun mi sandwiches uh, shout out to our boy uh, Kong at Firefly restaurant and bar he made an amazing bun mi like they, it was one of my favorites but I'd have to say uh, bun mi queen was probably my favorite the way yeah. that she made alright having my first bun mi after Tara's bite but I'm the bun mi master so I'll let you know Good. We've been good. Holy crap. All right, so we just got the banh mi queen, and I'm going to banh mi master. Let's see how it tastes. Okay, this is the banh mi queen. And I'm the banh mi master, so I'll let you know how it tastes. This is only, this is only 30,000 dong, which is just a little bit over $1 US. So. <laughs> There's so much flavor. This is insanely good. <laughs> sure. Hey, what's up? Ban Mi Master here. Uh, we're in Laos. My mom suggested this Ban Mi. She says it's the best. She had it delivered to us this morning. I'll let you know. Pretty good. It's like eight and a half, nine ish out of 10. I like it. Not quite like Queen. No, not quite like the Queen in Vietnam. Madame Quan is like really popular in Hoi An. She's known as the Banh Mi Queen. Um, she's more downtown uh, Hoi An. And so it's a little bit further from us, but we <laughs> decided to go. We wanted to make an effort to like go because we were so happy with the Banh Mi's at Firefly. We were pretty content there, but we were like, well, we just need to go and like double check that like, you know, the hype is, is right. And Madame Quan's was really good. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was bomb. It was bomb.com. Yeah. It, it was worth it. It was super busy. Um, super popular. Was like, it like a buck 50? It, yeah. It was, we, we spent $7 for four bomb me's and a smoothie. Yeah. It so was, it was insane. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just amazing quality like every, like we would have eaten there every day probably if we'd gone there earlier <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was a little it was... bit more of a trek for us but like we didn't fight it until kind of the end and we went in the rain like we braved the the rain to go um oh yeah we walked there with that. I yeah forgot about that yeah um but yeah now the yeah she is the place to go but like banh mi sandwiches especially in hoi an is the way to go um, I will speak to the pho just because I think I'm a pho, pho connoisseur, but you know, we were, didn't spend much time in the north. But the pho in Vietnam was I wasn't impressed with. I like the Lao pho better. So, for my first meal here in Vietnam, I had to get pho. Oh, yeah. Fried spring roll. That's good. We'll see how the rest of it is. Yummy, yummy. See the noodles. That's good. That's good. Very how much? Good. How much is it? It's only like two dollars and fifty cents. I love it. It's like eighteen dollars at home. <laughs> So I didn't order any pho, but Tara did. And I'm gonna do the broth test now. Oh, that's good. Tip approved. Extra rice. But outside of that, the the food in general was super good. Like yeah. all the different types of noodles that they had, like the hard noodles. The Quan um, noodles are pretty popular there. Yeah. It's like a, a main dish down uh -huh. in Hoi An. Mm -hmm. um, because of the way like the water is in Hoi An, that's what makes the Quang noodles so, so special. So mm -hmm. you can't make them in any other place in Vietnam just because of the, yeah. the way that the water is. All right, so we're having breakfast right now at our uh, villa and the spread is insane. And we're having a local famous dish, the Mi Quang noodles. And this looks delicious. There's shrimp in here. 
Give it a bite. Yummy, 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 yummy. I like you. I got the chef's noodles with cow lao noodles. Beef? Oh, top. <laughs> Don't get it on your shirt. Oh. Very good. Good. Those were our two favorite restaurants, Madame Kwan and Firefly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hoi An definitely surprised us. I think it we, surprised me big we time. We didn't know exactly what we were getting into mm -hmm. when we decided to go. And so um, we loved staying in Hoi An as opposed to Da Nang. Da Nang is a little bit more um, busy, and... busy um, kind of like the high rise hotels. Um, they obviously have like a, you know, they have the beach right there and stuff like that. But Hoi An is a little bit more, um, like I think the cultural experience, mm -hmm. um, kind of more low key and, and chill. So we were happy with spending the most of the days in Hoi An as opposed to Da Nang. And yeah. I think we'll definitely go back if we haven't have the yeah. option. I mean, if this would only count for you, if you've ever been to like Thailand, but I, I feel like Da Nang would be more like Phuket or like, Almost like uh, Bangkok, and then um, Hoi An would be more like Kolanta or something, which we really like. Yeah. So it's, yeah, the I was pleasantly surprised at how awesome Hoi An was, and like the the people and the food, like it was, it it was definitely a big surprise. And I I will honestly like if we ever go back to Vietnam, I would put that I would tell Tara to s say we should try to make a make our way down there just to see the people that we met but also just like the experience that we had was mm -hmm. really really good down there yeah so hopefully you guys found this helpful um if you guys are enjoying our videos make sure you sign up for our patreon to support us um as a patreon member you'll get access to our videos before they're available on youtube and you'll also get ad free videos um Another perk of being on our Patreon is we are starting a new segment on our YouTube called Where To Next, and one lucky member of our Patreon will be the guinea pig that gets to come on the show with us, and we will actually help you plan your trip live. So if that interests you, um, please sign up to our Patreon. The link is down below. If you have any questions or comments on Hoi An or Vietnam in general, please drop a comment. We'll see you in the next one. Peace. Thanks for watching. Later.